where you are in your cloud transformation and cloud migration journey and your CRM journey. And in that context, where does your core transaction platform or core platform, if you will, Epic in this case for the health system, where does it fit when, in that overall context? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so a lot of effort and focus on getting those tier one platforms. Um, like you said, an EMR like Epic on the provider side, your core claims processing and financial billing and payment systems on your uh, your claims you know, systems to support your, your health plan side. And so both of those we've migrated into uh, Microsoft's Azure cloud. And so we have multiple segmented instances where we're, we control who accesses what systems across that. Uh, we also have a regional instance to have a DR and primary to support that. And so the bulk of our compute, as well as all of the data and reporting is up in that cloud. And so we did, we, we spent a lot of time and we actually have a patent, a provisional patent that's tied to what we did with our cloud transformation. And so that patented um, uh, solution, we're actually going to leverage that with our lessons learned over the past three or four years, which are more than just how to get something to cloud, but how do you change from CapEx to OpEx? How do you convince the board and ELT about the value of cloud beyond just saving dollars? Because it's about agility, uh, how fast you can move, how fast you can spin up and spin down, how easily you can interact with other cloud-based systems and technologies, right? Like Salesforce, since you meant CR CRM, which I'll go into a little bit, which is one of the, the, the CRM tools that we've we've rolled out, but and Workday, we just went live with Workday uh, on, 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 on April 1st. So these are all cloud-based systems that can interact better if you're in a cloud environment. And the interesting thing uh, is one of the things that we pushed hard working with the team over the past months and will come out with in the next couple of months is we're actually going to spin off a for-profit um, cloud uh, IT services organization that was built up in terms of IP capability, the talent, was built up inside of Centera. But to get that talent to keep on growing and be able to do what they wanna do in a for-profit world, we decided we need to spin this off as its own new company um, and create that joint venture so that those folks can grow and we can still retain and get the best technology folks that will work for an environment like that that may not think about their primary IT job being working for a, a not-for-profit health system. So that's a tremendous story in terms of what we did how we learned how to do that effectively, how we ate our own dog food. And now we have a framework and a construct that is licensable and driven towards a patent that is real IP that we can now help other health systems or payviders go down a path of helping with that journey to cloud because there's still a lot of folks that need to get that foundational journey to cloud that benefits all of these other areas and components. And, and with that, I'll answer just briefly the CRM component. There are a number of CRMs today. The most recent one that we rolled out um, that went live just a few weeks ago was uh, leveraging Salesforce inside of our health plan. But I would like to think more of it, a CRM or a contact um, ecosystem of all those omni channels being more than just your standards, you know, old school um, CRM, even if people don't think Salesforce is old school, right? But the old school deployment of a CRM or a call center, it's much different than where it needs to be in terms of a true contact center or contact ecosystem.